Um, I would like to thank you and welcome you all to the premiere of Rosie. Um, let's all take a minute to turn off our cell phones because it is 1942 and we all know that they didn't have those. <laughs> um, above me and to my right are beautiful works of art um, done by our art classes here at Ewanda. So after the show or during intermission, um, let's all take time and appreciate them. Um, in the area to my left, the room, there will be restrooms, shirts, snacks. Um, so that's where all that will be, and we will have a 15 minute intermission. Thank you. I agree with you, Margaret. He agrees with you, Margaret. Oh. 
Hush yourself, Doris. I'll hush now, but we have an agreement. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Harrell. I love the sight of production in the morning. Well, then shake its feather before you chop its head off. Mary, that is just crude, very crude. Oh, All right, that's enough out of both of you. Please, Mr. Harrell, go ahead. Thank you, Virginia. I have good news and bad news. Ladies, your work has been outstanding. In fact, I have a letter right here in my hand from the First Lady of the United States, praising your efforts. You are helping to win the war, ladies. I am sure the postscript on me too, Mr. Harris. You're helping too, Donald. More than you know, Margaret. Donald, you're a young, able-bodied man. Which might lead some to question your fortitude and courage, but not me. I know you are contributing to the war the best way you know how. And the bad news? Right, right. I know how hard this has been. The hours, the nature of the work, the less than hospitable response from people. But you've all shown true grit. Real moxie, I tell you. I kind of like the nicknames. I feel a little bit like Rudolph, but with biceps instead of a red nose. The old lady who lives next door to me keeps bringing me jars she needs to have open. Said her husband used to open them, but she thinks he's fighting in the war. The first one. <laughs> she thinks he's still alive. Poor doll. And that's the exact kind of sacrifice you're making. You're my best team. You know that, right? Your productivity is through the roof. I just got them telling the boys upstairs about you. How great you are. I'd run through a wall for you and your team, Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Harold. Beating Hitler is more than a full-time job. I'm going to need you seven days a week. More than a full-time job? Longer hours per shift. <laughs> I mean, you're helping win the war. We've got good news, great news at the Battle of Midway, but we can't stop there. This is the big push. That's what the boys in D.C. are saying. The big push. We got it, boss. The big push. We're here for you, for our country. And for the derogatory comments. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites today was a, uh, hey, skirt. Why don't you come a little closer so I can get a good look at you and see if your wife material No. <laughs> I hear more whistles than if I worked at a train station. Hi, Also. What are you apologizing for, Helen? If we were men, we could poop hey, and um, carry on. I, That's enough. Hello? I got you four new ribbon guns and four new eager workers to operate them. We don't like new people. That, I don't like the ones I already know. We'll train any new folks you send us, sir. And wrap them lovingly in the constricting embrace of a python. I trust that this will be a seamless transition. I would expect nothing less from my aid. Here, AT. You can count on us, Mr. Harold. I know, Virginia. Oh, I almost forgot. There's going to be a report coming to do a story on the war after home. Shoot some I did some acting back in the day. My Ophelia was called a melodious bird struck down in its song. <laughs> did an audience member throw something at you while you were singing? Rotten fruit or something. <laughs> we'll need to get the new hires integrated as soon as possible. Yes, sir. I'm counting on you, Virginia. I'm counting on all of you to be the real patriots I know you are. Our boys deserve that. Proclamation of King James. I think he had something to do with a book I didn't read. Blasphemy, Mary. That's the Bible you're talking about. Do you think Mr. Harold failed the psychological screening? Maybe he's deranged, like at home he has a secret laboratory in his basement where he's assembling an army of crickets that speak in a coded language and deliver messages to the enemy. <laughs> Doris, stop talking that nonsense. It's a possibility. Regardless of his mental boss here in California, which is in the United States, which is on planet Earth. And I would like you all to remember that. Maybe he's just a fuck fuck chicken and afraid of dying. Mary. <laughs> I'm a giant chicken. Virginia, I should 
battlefield and here. We are at war. It's on our doorstep. We do what we have to do, what we are ordered to do to help win the war. Virginia, I'm sorry about your husband. Your words didn't kill him, Mary, and sure as heck not going to bring him back. We have the work. We rivet, we build, we put planes in the air, we defeat the enemy, we win the war. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. Peanut butter, again. There's a pretty good chance I will die of one time boredom. I got butter yesterday. What's the big deal? You don't understand. I'm talking real from the utter cow butter. Not that imitation stuff. Real creamy, smooth, and silky. Kind of stuff that makes life worth living. <laughs> Where did you get real butter, Doris? Neighbor lady. Hates it. Traded her for a bunch of radishes, if you can believe it. Doris, you are taking advantage of a fragile old woman. It's butter. Real, genuine article butter. I would do some uh, horrible things for some chocolate. You're sweet enough already. <laughs> oh, you like that, Ruth? What do you have? Yeah, yeah. No. Pee. With no J. Just like the rest of you. But at least. I'm not ripping off old ladies. Trading radishes for butter. You doing the devil's work, Doris? Gonna make a devil's food cake with that butter? Mary, you know the devil's food cake is chocolate, right? Mm, chocolate. Would you have a piece? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Why are you always looking for trouble, Mary? It is better than being a boring Rude, Margaret. I am not boring. <coughs> oh, but you're all right with being a prude, though. If that means I'm striving to be good, then I guess I am a prude. Don't you ever just want to let loose? I read. Oh, there's nothing like a great book to satisfy the mind and the senses. <laughs> I bet you read those uh, steamy romance novels in the dimly lit room. Ben ripped off his shirt, revealing a muscular physique that made Margaret weak in the knees. There was a boy back home who made me weak in the knees. Frankie Slater. Oh. He was six. Of course. Poor Frankie. Before you judge, I was also six. Oh, poor Frankie. <laughs> he ran around with his shirt off all the time. Thought he was Tarzan. Well, we all know who makes Margaret weak in the knees. Stop teasing her, Mary. Margaret, you should write your own romance novel. <clears throat> Donald couldn't quite rip off his shirt, revealing only part of an almost muscular physique that made Margaret jump. His bones like a love crazed maniac. You're a real riot, Mary. Like a steamroller at a tea party. A steamroller would be a good thing to have at my tea party! <laughs> Everybody knows you like those little cucumber sandwiches, good and flat. I think you hurt her feelings, Mary. I have feelings too, you know. <laughs> Very deep, deep down. Oh. <laughs> Back, 
Mary, the only thing falling from the sky are bombs. Take, take it back. I... Where? <coughs> Mount Olympus? Because this was a gift from the gods, I tell you. Mary. Virginia. Can we please listen to the radio? One song, Virginia, what do you say? Yeah, it's a good open that the radio turned up in the first place. It is extremely bad. Can we go on a song like this? Rue, what about you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Virginia, it's almost unanimous. You have the power to make this happen. You could bring joy to our lives. What do you say? Just one song? One song, but yes! one song, but keep the volume down. Great. Shaking things up a bit. Amazing! I feel like I'm flying. Me too. You can at least smile, Virginia. I could. Are no coincidence. 
<laughs> People tell me I could have played her in the movie. My time is coming. It's written in the stars. Oh, a fellow thespian. Thespian? You mean star. <clears throat> My name is Betty. I was a runner-up in the 1937 Miss South Dakota pageant. Delightful, isn't she? Her talent was juggling, so this should be a cinch for her. He knows we won't be juggling um, bowling pins and fruit here, right? Marie, I went to boarding school in Petty. Oh. My name used to be Mary, but I changed it because Mary made me seem sad and all wilted. Hey! My name is Lillian, but people call me Lily. I want to be a fashion model and marry a prince. I want to bring joy to the lives of my husband, children, and the rest of the <laughs> She can't be real. None of this is um, <clears throat> real. Virginia, see to it that they are trained and ready to go by tomorrow. Sir, you want me to train these ladies to be riveters by tomorrow? I'm giving you the tools and the personnel to succeed. And now you must use them. I believe in you, Virginia. I appreciate that, sir, but... What is it? These ladies don't seem... well suited for this kind of work. Do you remember when you walked in here? Who trained you? You. And look at you now. You're managing the highest producing team in the entire factory. Isn't that something? Yes, sir. These are challenging times, but... There are times that reward those who rise to the challenge. And that's you, Virginia. You rise to the challenge. Thank you, Mr. Harold. I believe in you and your team. I'm counting on you, Virginia. See to it that these ladies are ready to go. Welcome, ladies. New beach. Mary, please. We are here to let you know that we, all of us, are here to help you learn the ropes and get adjusted. We are the highest producing team in the factory, so the standards and expectations are set high. So don't let us down. Mary, <laughs> you are rather unpleasant and lonely, <gasps> aren't you? Mary, <laughs> but the name suits you. Let me guess, you were the class clown in your podunk town, made everyone laugh. But no one ever took you seriously. You hung out with the boys, made them laugh, but never had a steady. And now you have finally found something you're good at, and you're running the roost. It took a world war for that to happen. Sad, Mary. <clears throat> Very sad. You see, we were brought in here to make you look good. Tomorrow, the press comes. National news. Not just some guy with spectacles and a notebook from your little boat on town. Mary, just show us the basics and we'll make you look as good as your numbers say you are. And, and when the reporter comes, stay out of the way and let us do what we were brought in to do. <laughs> They are not real workers. They're plants for the photo shoot. They are prettier. <laughs> Why are they Virginia? <laughs> really? This is setting women back decades. Take one of the new ladies and show her the job. Don't you see? They are just here to make us look pretty. We do all the work and they get all the glory? You're not as dumb as you look. You look by as dumb! Not more word out of you, Mary, and I will send you to the scrapyard. <laughs> Thanks for coming in early. Am I in trouble? 
a question. I love the speed of your gun. The speed of your mouth, not so much. For one day, one day. Can you can it? Can I can it? I need you to play the game. Play the game? I need you to behave like a normal worker. Oh, boring! And very challenging for me, merely impossible. I'm willing to make it worth your while. I want to play the radio. Can't deny what it does for us. For the team, and that pilot, he's one of our own in one of our plays. He gives us something to work for. What are you proposing? We play it every day at lunch until the war is over. I'll give you two weeks. Two months. And uh, you have to dance one. Dance? Yeah. Never. No deal then. I like getting my picture took. Small town, punk on girl like me. Never had a steady. No telling what an insecure dame like that could do. And with the uh, <coughs> national press coming. One month lunch only volume at a respectable level. And I don't dance. Virginia, the girls need to see you let loose. Heck, you need to do it for yourself. Do you accept this offer? My next one won't be nearly as appealing. Uh, deal. And you'll dance eventually. There's a little lunacy in you, Virginia. And you want to let it out. I know you do. Let me be clear, Mary. You will not do anything to distract or deviate from the plan. I need your word on this. You know what you're really asking me to do, right? And not just for me. For all of us. Not just the women on this team, but all women. The little girls who will grow up in a world where they have to be pretty and well-mannered. Meanwhile, the boys can be wild, free, and do whatever they want, including being in a magazine spread because they are good workers. Not because they're gorgeous models for Penny or South Dakota. You kept that right? That isn't my job. My job is to produce planes, as many as possible, to give our boys the best possible chance to come home. And if that means posing in the background while a few, while a few pictures are taken with models posing in them, so be it. Because the real picture isn't suitable for public viewing. But that's war. It isn't pretty. Even at home, there are rusty, jagged edges, and no one is unaffected by the cuts it leaves. If it boosts morale, if it helps the war effort, if anything positive comes out of it, it'll be worth it. The scars are real, Virginia. They are part of what makes us who we are. Just as much as our eyes, or arms, or brains or hearts. Your scars are what make you the leader you are, the person you are. I was angry and confused before I started here. When Frank died in Pearl Harbor, I wanted to lash out at someone, anyone. But when I started here, things just clicked. The way the rivet gun worked, the numbers, all of it. I felt something when I was working here, something I've never felt before. There was always that expectation I should feel that way in the kitchen or sewing or taking shorthand, but none of that ever fit. This does. And part of me died the day that Frank died. But the part of me that's left this part, it has to live on with new purpose. I tried to enlist. Before I started working here, I mean, I, I tried to sign up. And for 
Shinji. I swear I can fight side by side with men. I still believe that. They laughed me right out of the office. So you wanted to fight? I want to fight. I mean, look at me work. I rip it like I'm on the battlefield. And that's what makes you such a great riveter. You're making me blush. Thanks, Virginia. I don't want you to be anyone but who you truly are, Mary. I'm asking you to buy in, not sell out. I know it's hard, but there's compromise involved. Millions of people will benefit from our sacrifice. I have to believe that. For Frank. And for myself. I'll buy in, Virginia. And not just for the chance to uh, play the radio. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> You just remember who you truly are, not who they want you to be. Be proud of your scars. And then I told him if he ever talked to me like that again, he'd be singing falsetto for the rest of his life. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Any news from our pilot yet? Have you heard him on the radio? I think we should keep it on in the background, you know, just in case. Uh You don't think that's a good idea. You're the one that introduced it to us. There's a time for work and a time for play. Maybe one day you'll learn the difference between the two. I'll learn the difference. <laughs> questions. 
and not to worry. That everything will be all right, that she'll be back soon. He led her out by the elbow like he wanted to make sure she went with him. That she didn't run away. I let a stranger call me, take my mother away, and I didn't do a single thing to stop him! Figure this out, Helen. We'll get your mom back. She's a sweet lady. She doesn't even jaywalk. Why would they take her? She kept telling us she'd be back. Back from where? Where did they take her? Where's your dad? He went to go find her. He was at the office when they took her away. Why would they take her, Virginia? Helen's mom didn't do anything wrong. Which isn't right, is it? When my mom was sick, before, when, when mom was sick, we had a neighbor, an elderly lady from Thailand. She'd come over every day and bring mom soup, and they would sit and talk and laugh all day. She lived alone. They took her away just last week. I didn't think anything of it until... Oh God, I'm, I'm sorry, Helen. I, I shouldn't have said anything. I'm sorry. It right. It's not your fault, Donald. This isn't right. No. Virginia. Helen. Go home. Please, Virginia, don't make me go home. I'll lose my mind waiting. Work is the best thing for me right now. Just give me a minute. I'll be fine, you'll see. I'll be the best riveter today. I promise. All right, Tom. Work it is. Back to work. Get 
buttermilk and honey from anyway? Aren't they rations? Some things are worth protecting. And this? This is our all-star team. Well, there is no group of workers on this planet who could produce the way these ones do. And uh, not hard on the eyes either. We want America to see what we're doing for the world. Sounds good. This is Lewis, the best photographer in the business. His pictures make it on the covers of magazines and newspapers all over the world. Show us your best side, ladies. Come on, Mary. Show us your best side. Mary <laughs> gets it, Doris. Why don't you? Oh, I get it. I'll work around you. The best photos are our subjects so engrossed in what they're doing, they don't know the camera's there. You hear that, ladies? Just keep your noses to the grind. Mm -hmm. I need you to move over this way, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Are you all right? Oh. Look, there's some lucky soldier coming home today. 
this after the war. How long have you worked here? She's very shy. Terminally shy. She might drop dead if you keep asking her questions. <laughs> A 
crew. Do you like spinster better? Do the neighborhood cats instinctively know to congregate at your house? I can smell the loneliness and cat pee from here. And trust me when I say, if Lily so much as winked at Donald, he'd run away with her. Easy, Betty. I don't run off with strange men. Even ones with strong jawlines and deep reflective eyes. You might fly to the Pacific without a plane, huh? Oh, I bet he could. With those strong arms and sturdy shoulders, I'm surprised you aren't over there now. I mean, you have the steely look and resolute character of a soldier. He has a medical condition. Could have me. I mean, you look darn near perfect. Far from it. I just really wanted to apologize for pretending to be something I'm not. For taking credit for things I didn't do. You don't have to apologize to them. Professional phonies. We'll see when the story comes out. <laughs> I can't wait. You look like you're holding a cobra when you're holding that gun. <laughs> Very natural doing is wringing your neck. <sighs> Fighting words from the glamour girl. Scared straight from the horse's mouth. Me? Care for some help. I'll some help. Shut up. Shut up. And listen. She's right. Hey, you! 
The quiet one that cringes all the time. Go get us some more iced tea. Will you? Sweetie! I'm talking to you. I asked you a question, girlie. It's rude not to answer. you up a little, after the war was over, you might actually get a man. A short, balding one with a boring job, but that's better. Come on, Ruth. Don't let her talk to you that way. You gotta stand up for yourself. I would control the speed of my mouth, 
not with the speed of my gun. Mr. Harold. Yes, Mary. What were the fines upstairs thinking? Let me guess. Hire these. Pretty. Front woman floozies to come in and make us look good. Did you wine and dine them? Did you tell them they wouldn't really have to work ever? Don't you see? We are being used again. When the war is over, and it will be one day, we will return to the kitchens and sewing machines and secretary desks. I don't want people to be hurt or killed. But I see the value in the war continuing. For me, for us, for women. When the war is over? The war. When the war is over, I just hope that day arrives soon. And peace is restored to the world. And when that day comes, I'll be celebrating our boys coming home. And I certainly won't be thinking about myself. What will happen to us? I don't even know what will happen to me. And frankly, I don't care, as long as our way of life is preserved. Yes, yes, you do know, and you certainly care. Parties celebrating what you have done. Teaching unskilled labor to build flying tits that soar. And shoot.
And what do you do when you've got the enemy on the run? Produce more. Run faster, pursue them to the ends of the earth if necessary. Either you're going to help me, or someone else will. Someone else? You want to be on the right side of this, don't you, Virginia? All of you want to be on the right side of this? The side I'm on. The side Mr. Percy is on. The side the President of the United States is on. Together, we are an engine. Some parts, like Mr. Percy and myself, are not as easy to replace, because we make major decisions that impact the outcome of this war. Other parts, like Mary, can be replaced. Parts can also be interchanged in order to help the engine run at its optimal level. With total efficiency of the engine in mind, Dorothy is being transferred. What? But Dorothy is doing so well here. What about Betty or Lillian? You can take one of them. Not your call, Virginia. One of the bosses upstairs needs a secretary and is taking a liking to Dorothy. She's good for the team, sir. Yes, and she will be good for the team somewhere else. This is a war, Virginia. We're not playing house. I'm aware that this is a war, Mr. Harold. We need good workers like Dorothy to meet your production expectations. I'm doing what's best in my factory. For production for the war. You'll like this better. Ladies, try to remember your place. Insubordination will not be tolerated. Dorothy, come with me. Dorothy! Why would they take her? Virginia, do you ever want to- What, Ruth? Punch him in his precious parts? Well? How many female manager managers are at this factory? You. And why do you think that is? I don't know, it is a man's world. But the men are off at war. So right now, it's a woman's world. It's our world. We just have to learn to play the game. The game stinks to high heaven. And it's stacked against us. It may stink, Doris, but it's a smell we've got to get used to if we want to continue to make change. I remember when I was young, peeking in on my father's card game and thinking, I want to play in that game. To be a part of the wafting smoke and clinking glasses and the laughter and even the groans of agony. Then. One day, I was 13, he caught me watching and he said, we're short a man. Come on in, Doris. The other men hemmed and hawed about, this isn't the place for a little girl, but my pop insisted. And I sat right down and proceeded to win all their money. <laughs> Doris, you hustle. Hardly. I'm just better at probability, statistics, and reading human behavior than a bunch of drunks. I realized that even after winning all that money, I didn't earn any respect. They said it was beginner's luck or that my dad rigged it for me. Any reason except my skill. I never got a seat at that card game again. You can play their game by their rules and still never truly win. You guys are absolutely depressing me. I miss Mary. She was really good at this. Yes, Mary was great at ripping, but not at playing the game. And look where that got her. Sometimes you just have to play the game, ladies. I was hoping you would be our pilot. Yeah. He gave me a reason to work. You know, I didn't really get it until I heard his voice. Back to work. Everyone left their keys in their cars. Everyone. All the time. 
and it felt like an invitation to take them for a spin. Every teenager had to do it, at least once. Man, oh man, it's beautiful up here. It's one thing to see a beautiful sunset. It's another thing entirely to fly into it. Melt into it. Like being a color. Feeling it with your entire being. Funny, I'm never poetic on the ground. And suddenly I'm flipping flying William Shakespeare up here. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? It sounds better up here. Everything is better up here. shoes. I thought I was the caretaker. I thought I was the protector. But it's you. It's you, Ruth. Mom, would you help? Do you really think so? I know so.
Thank you, ladies. I always felt like I was really part of the team. Hey, who knows? Maybe I'll get to fly one of our planes. Wouldn't that be something? Work. 
I don't take orders from a dame. I'm the manager of this team. <laughs> and I'm the king of my easy chair. We're all held to the same level of accountability here, Richard. I'm your boss, not your mother. Well, I'm not going to listen to some skirts. This skirts team has the highest production numbers in this entire pant-wearing plant. <laughs> if the numbers are even real. What are you suggesting? The men upstairs, they want you to look good. So they added some rivets to help the cause. Our numbers are real. We earn our rivets. Now, sure. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? You mean a wager? Well, Virginia, are you sure that this is a good idea? We don't have Mary anymore. She was our best riveter. Mary was amazing. Poetry in motion. A brilliant blur. Sounds like you're not up to the challenge. Oh, no, we are very much up to the challenge. Great. You're two fascist guns against us two. And if we win, you step down as manager. Oh, and you make our lunches for a month with dessert. So what do we get when we win? We'll work without complaint. That's it? And I'll wear a skirt to work. Really? <laughs> no, not really. Because we won't lose. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot about that part. And you make our lunches for a month with dessert. And you work as a real member of this team without complaint. That means no negative attitude. Or sabotage. Or loafing. Or name calling. No dame, doll, skirt, broad, sweet buns. Sweet buns? <laughs> I heard that one yesterday. Yeah. Deal. <laughs> Right. I only got to G when we had to recite the alphabet in kindergarten. Ah, I froze like a statue. Well, my numbers aren't the best on the team, but if no one else is going to step up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is a great idea without Mary. Moo! <laughs> what was that? A, a chicken. It sounded sick. <laughs> Alan, my friend. Oh, thank you, Helen. I'm no Mary, but my numbers have steadily gotten better. Oh, well, maybe you need to pick your nails first. Right, Richard? Less time, more rivets. Oh, well, I love this well competition. And also, my mom's pineapple upside down cake. I really like the smell of that. John, can you please focus? Gotcha, focus. You know, I'm so focused that I see with one eye open and switch eyes halfway through the night. That way I'm always focused on something. Usually, this tiny spot on my ceiling that I used to think was ketchup. But why would there be a tiny spot of ketchup on my ceiling? <laughs> Did you know that there are two different ways to spell Johnny? Let's get started. Agree. Call out your cat. I am really focused. Like a magnifying glass for the ants on the sidewalk. Which is kind of unfair since the ants really didn't do anything to deserve Johnny. Focus. Ready? <laughs> Set. Ribbit! One, two, two three, three, four, five! five. Yeah. 2,316! 2,309! 2,302! 2,295! Ladies up ahead! Ooh. I never ribbit this fast! to be sick so your brother wouldn't have to go off to war? You're a real loon bird, aren't you? Because don't need that kind of talk, Richard. What did you say, Johnny? Mm -hmm. uh, I just said that maybe we should rip it instead of name calling and arguing. Just to clarify, I'm the loony bird in this place. Everyone is talking about the competition. <laughs> the entire secretarial pool is rooting for you, lady. Oh. And Mr. Harrell's on his way. Good. Let him see who his best riveters are. I don't think he's happy. He's been griping about numbers. The boys upstairs are breathing down my neck, he says. Something about the side with the most claim owns the sky and are gods over the foolish mortals below. <coughs> if you ask me, he's on bonkers. Went to stay with her mom a week ago and has come back. <laughs> Sometimes I think I hear ticking coming from him. Like, like he's gonna blow. We need 
to make a push here, Johnny. We can make a push, got it. We can't lose, we'll be a laughing stock. My arm's trying to cramp up, so just give me a second. I'll give you a cramp. All right, I'll fight through it. <laughs> Trouble in paradise? Yes. No. <laughs> we are fine. I spent my whole life burying my pain and my feelings deep, deep down inside myself. That sounds, that sounds unhealthy. You know, very unhealthy, but very man. You know, it's okay to let your feelings out, right? Thanks, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm not allowed to, you know? Like, I'm some kind of bolt that no one can get in, including me. Would you shut up? It sounds like you're quitting. Cool. You guys, sorry, gals, are a lot better than I thought you'd be. Richie, maybe we should, uh, tip our caps to them, or sometimes you just get out of play. I'll drop dead from exhaustion before that happens. I'm not gonna lose to these Betty Crockers. Betty Crockers. <laughs> Well, now I'm thinking of my pineapple upside down cake again. <laughs> the frosting is amazing. All frost you. What's going on here? Is this a casino or a factory? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to gamble on winning the war. Sir, you're having a contest of skills. And the numbers are up. Call out your numbers! The numbers are up. The ladies are ahead! Yeah, the numbers are good. But we can't have you gambling like you pray degenerates in some back alley. The boys upstairs don't like that kind of behavior. Thought you liked healthy competition, sir. What was that? Jimmy. We got this. Let's get back to it. Win and turn these skirts where they rightfully belong. In the kitchen. Richie, you better catch up. I can't be held responsible for what happens if you leave. Kick their burly butts, ladies. Okay, I'm done. I can't rivet another rivet. Please tell me you're kidding. My hand keeps cramping up, and I can't stop thinking of my pineapple upside down cake. Riffin, keep going. No bells, whistles, horns, or pangs of hunger can stop us now. Keep going, Johnny, keep going. Fight, fight, fight to the end. I can't. Rivet, Johnny, rivet. Rivet, you idiot. Just leave him alone. Hear me? Fine. It ends when I say it ends. I'm sorry, buddy. Don't quit on me. It's all I got. I'm not gonna be best friends with a quitter. Do you hear me, Johnny? You quit on me, you quit on yourself. You quit on your country. Is there anything more cowardly than that? Yes, there is that. I'll always remember this hell that we were a team when we won. Yes, we did. We beat them. Fair and square. And yet, I know you're unconvinced. You'll see that we had the better guns, or that Johnny held you back, or that the sun was in your eyes, even though we're indoors. You're talking crazy. I couldn't save my best worker. I couldn't save Frank. Oh, boo -hoo. But I can beat you, and I can beat you again. Let me be clear and decisive. I want you to feel it deep down that I beat you. No bells, horns, pangs of hunger, or whistles. You don't need to do this, Virginia. You already won. Let's go then, skirt. Ruth, count us off. Ready? Set? Go! I still can't believe it. Everyone is talking about it. Ethan, the boys in the parking lot. They're in shock. Now one cat call this morning. We won. The women won the ribbon contest. Where's Ellen? Mr. Percy? That government man? He's looking for you. You say Mr. Percy? He's being very pushy. He even said my red shoes are vaguely anti-American. What does that mean? My red shoes are vaguely anti-American? That's quite an accusation. It's red, white, and blue. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think that man ever saw it. All he would say is that it's a matter of national security. You all remember Mr. Percy? Uh -huh. He is here enforcing the terms of an executive order. That's from the President of the United States. Don't all of our orders come directly from the President? Yes, but I just want to make sure that you all are aware of the gravity. Grabbing the situation. I'd 
looking for Helen Stanton. In regards to some inconsistencies we had in an interview with her mother, Hiroko Stanton. Uh, I'm Helen Stanton. Virginia, you're not Helen. Helen is Helen and she's right there. An order from the President of the United States is not to be trifled. That's Helen, right there. Helen, please come. I'm Helen Stanton. She's not Helen Stanton. No, 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 no. I'm Helen Stanton. You're off your rocker. I don't think this is a good idea. I am Helen Stop this! That is Helen Stanton, right there. We all know who Helen is. I'm Helen Stanton. Stop. Right? She's someone we work with. I know her. 
People use the word friend too loosely nowadays. What do we really know about Helen? She's a solid worker. She was supportive and kind to me. And that's all we know. Are any of us your friends then? I mean, if Helen's not a friend, then who is? I'm not sure. But I am not willing to risk our national security on someone we may or may not truly know. I don't know a lot of things for certain. But I know that Helen is my friend. I feel it in my heart. Sorry to break it to you, Doris. Feelings don't matter in times like these. Doris, stop stirring the pot like you're married. And Margaret, Helen may not have been your friend, but she was ours. And you might want to think about that before you sign off on our not so temporary relocation. Now, back to work, or you'll both end up putting junk in the screw up yard. months. 
and you think your hearts are as hardened as your hands, but you don't have the guts for it. To look somebody in the eye and do them physical harm, kill them even. Do you have that in you? Any of you? Do any of you think you are capable of doing something like that? I am. Thank you for your bravery and service. 
I hope I was able to play a minor part in the major sacrifice you made for our country. For me. That's Mary's radio. And Virginia is the one who fixed it. Shouldn't you ladies be working? We are the ones who heard the pilot, not him. Haven't you had enough time in the spotlight? Maybe it's addictive. Can't get enough of it, can you? She's right. Mary found it. Mary was dismissed for several violations in her conduct, including defiance which you two are dangerously close to engaging in. I'll fire all of you. Don't think I won't. You heard Mr. Harold. Back to work. What was his name? The pilot? Doris. Frankie Slater. What did Frankie compare the clouds to? I don't know what that has to do with it. Where did he like to go with his girlfriend? I never met him. I was able to receive a radio transmission with his coordinates. I'm sure he has a beautiful girlfriend and a poetic description of the clouds, but I don't know about any of that. I just did my small part to save a man's life. Cotton candy clouds. The same colors as his girlfriend's cheeks at the county fair. Maybe you should take a break. Get some fresh air. Women, am I right? Everything is pink clouds and romance. Our numbers are the only truth. Try to remember that. That's why we're here, to help win a war. And in a war, we keep score in lives. Our dead versus their dead. Or maybe you don't want to consider that, because I was able to save Frankie, and you weren't able to save anyone, not even your husband. Mr. Hale was me! Virginia, it was me. I'm the one who received the radio transmission. You tell him! Hold on, Jimmy, you said you were the one that was the pilot. It was me. You can't take what these loony dames say serious. You didn't find it. Mary found the radio. She's the one who deserves all the credit here. I broke it and then fixed it in an attempt to make things right. But Mary got fired. Helen taken away. Don enlisted. Richard got beat up. And Jimmy. Why don't you tell us what happened, Jimmy? Because you know, don't you? Or worse, you were a part of it. And maybe I was too. This is dissension! And you know what happens when there's dissension on the battlefield! Soldiers die! But maybe you don't understand that! But I do! I do and I on this fact, you not rowing the river to me. And I say that my little life, I did that. And I will continue to run things long after these women have gone back to baking cookies and hosting dinner parties for their husbands. Now anyone who would like to keep their job will get back to work immediately. Virginia. Yes. You are being transferred to what you won't fill you in on. She's our manager. Not anymore. John, you're the new team manager. You sure? What did I say? It just doesn't seem like a good idea. I believe you, John. Why do we break up the best team? Not your job, not your concern, not your problem. What happens to numbers being the only truth? Virginia is the single most dedicated worker in this factory. And her services are no longer needed here. You're an ingrate, Jimmy. That sounds right. Ruth, you're fired. John, stay out of this or you'll end up like Richard. What did you say? Virginia, please don't. Stop. You can't do this. It's already done. What's to be gained here? You're fired too, Margaret. Virginia, it's time to move now. Doesn't look like she's going anywhere. Virginia?